Hey, this is Steven from TechMaker.tv. In this episode, we're going to keep going with our Ruby on Rails 6 link shortener. This should be episode or part 7. In part 6, we started setting up our controller, and in the process, we realized that we actually don't have any validation on the format of the link. And so I want to go ahead and fix that in this part, and in the next part, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap up our controller and view so that we can actually generate a short link for people. All right, so let's jump in. And as with the earlier videos, we're gonna keep going with our test-driven uh, style here. So I ran some commands in the last episode or two that generated some extra directories down here. And because I don't really care for the automated or the automatically generated tests, uh, I just deleted those folders for now. Uh, so right now I've just got controllers, models, and services. So Let's click over here into the link spec and let's go ahead and add another couple of specs in here. So I actually have this spec here on line five that accepts an, a URL and a lookup code and, it, and it's testing that, okay, if it has a URL and it has a lookup code, it should be valid. So we don't need to copy this test and say it is valid if it has a properly formatted uh, URL. So what we actually wanna do is just the opposite. And so we're going to copy it and say it is invalid if the URL is not formatted properly. So if the URL is not formatted properly. And so this, um, you could go crazy and get really complicated. Um, I'm just going to say some random text here and expect uh, valid to be false and then let's run the test and we should have one failing. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about how we can actually make this pass. So over in our link class, um, we could do uh, something with regular expressions, we could do all sorts of things, um, but we're not gonna do that because that's really complicated and I'm all about saving time. So let's check out one of the built-in tools inside of Ruby. If we open up IRB, which is Interactive Ruby Prompt, there's an object um, URI that we can use to actually parse text and get some info about it. Uh, it's URL properties rather. So we can say URI.parse URI .parse. and then let's uh, pass in, sorry, I can't type right now, pass in something like um, google.com. Okay. So, and then we can say URL, URI, to stick with the naming is underscore. So when you're in IRB, you can set a variable to the last thing that you uh, returned with underscore, which is a cool trick. Um, so then we can say URI dot, um, what is it, domain maybe? Let's, let's I know, okay, so this is gonna be interesting. Uh, so URI dot public methods false.sort um, uri.publicmethods.sort okay so in here what is it so you have parse is on the class so we have a port we have a host maybe host is what we want so let's go uri.host Okay, cool. So that's, yeah, that's what we're looking for. So let's take a look at one more thing here. So if we go uri.parse, and then we just pass in uh, some crazy text. And so you see here this difference. Uh, let's look at our uri that we have. So you see here we have uri HTTPS. Here we have uh, generic. And this thing, let's set this equal to... Um, ASDF equals underscore because we don't really care. Um, now we can say uh, ASDF.host and you can see that it's nil. So what we can actually do is take the input provided by the user and then pass it into URI.parse and then check if the host is nil or not. Now that's not necessarily a perfect solution to the problem, but for our purposes, let's call it good enough. It's at least some validation, um, and it should handle most cases, but if you're building this in a real system, you might want to make it a little more robust. So we can get out of uh, IRB by just typing quit, 
So, okay, what we want to do now, and I'm going to resize this because I think this might be a little bit hard to, to see down here like this. Maybe if I can get a handle on it. There we go. Okay. So what I want to do is say something like validate uh, URL format. Something like that. Validate original URL format. Then what we can do is come down and say original URL format and we're going to take the original URL and put it inside of our URI uh, that we had been doing, parsing it. URI equals URI.parse original URL. And then what we want to do is basically say if uh, URI.host.nil and then we want to say uh, errors errors dot add original URL and then we'll just say um, invalid URL format so now let's run our tests again and see what's going on with that okay so let's look at what's happening here so we've got nil being passed in in the case that original URL is nil so we need to actually catch that also um, but you can see that that's a different test actually uh, link spec line 32 so if we go down here we have uh, no original URL given and so it's invalid so we need to actually handle that so what we can do is say uh, begin rescue and then I'm gonna copy this URI URI invalid error just rescue this here and let's just leave it like that for just a second and let's rerun our specs okay so I flipped that around so that actually goes over here and then we pass it in as E so now let's run this again and we're green okay so let's talk about how we could do this a little bit differently and so let's try this so for now let's comment this out so let's think about what's actually happening here we're having to guard against original URL being nil and we have another thing that's actually uh, validating that so in actual fact like we don't really want to have to guard against that here because something else is guarding against it so one thing we might could do and I'll have to think about this to, to decide if it's actually a good idea. So if we say uh, original URL or empty string, what that's going to evaluate to is empty string. So let's run this and see if we're still green. And we are. So this is one of these things that I think you could criticize for being a little bit too clever potentially. And honestly, there may be other things that would cause that to break. But we know for a fact so far, or the only thing we know for a fact is that nil was causing this problem and that this makes our test pass. I like the shorter, cleaner code. Um, I don't feel like we're doing anything too crazy here. So I'm just going to leave it and um, call that good to go. So now we have our test passing and we're validating our link format. All right, so that's it for this episode. In the next one, we'll be back to working on the front end side of things, hooking it up so that you can actually generate links. Then we'll add a little bit of styling at some point and uh, make it so that you could share the links and then have people actually go to those links and have it work. So that's pretty cool. And um, we'll get to some of that in the next episode and I will talk to you there.